Today, we're going to talk about some common mistakes people make when they start withdrawing from their pensions. It's a crucial topic because getting it wrong can have serious implications for your retirement. To make it easier, I've grouped these mistakes into three key areas, taxes and benefits, managing your retirement portfolio, and handling pension withdrawals. If you find topics like this helpful, take a moment to subscribe for future content. Your support is very much appreciated. Let's kick things off with mistake number one, not taking advantage of free money from HMRC. Yes, you heard that right, free money. Many people don't realize they can continue contributing to their pension, even after they've stopped working, up to age 75. If you can afford to put in £2,880 each year, without recycling money from your pension, HMRC will top it up with an additional £720 in tax relief. Now, I know what you're thinking. You remind me that, that money won is twice as sweet as money earned. Now, I'm no Paul Newman, and no, you didn't win this £720, but it is your tax relief entitlement, and it feels pretty sweet all the same. That's essentially a 25% guaranteed return on your investment, year after year. Don't want to invest it? Fine, just use Drawdown to withdraw it tax-free. And if you're married, that free cash boost doubles to £1,440 annually from HMRC. Don't leave this free money on the table. Moving on to mistake number two, accidentally triggering the Money Purchase Annual Allowance, or MPAA for short. This is a bit of a sneaky one that can catch people out, especially if you're retiring early or planning to continue working in some capacity. Taking taxable pension income triggers the MPAA, which reduces your annual pension contributions from £60,000 to £10,000. This severely reduces how much you can pay into your pension, if you're planning to go back to work, or if you own a business and want to keep paying into a SIP. To avoid this, consider using Flexi Access Drawdown to withdraw only the 25% tax-free lump sum. But be careful not to withdraw any taxable income from your drawdown account, or use UF Plus to withdraw from your pension, as both will trigger MPAA. Now, annuities do have their place in retirement planning, and the only type that doesn't trigger MPAA is a lifetime annuity. However, I generally advise against this option without first consulting a financial advisor, due to the inflexibility, finality, and opportunity costs associated with such annuities. Let's move on to mistake number three, getting caught out by the emergency tax code on your first withdrawal. Did you know that pensioners have been charged up to £55,000 in emergency income tax, after making withdrawals from their pension pots. When you first take money out of your defined contribution pension, HMRC applies an emergency tax code. They treat your first withdrawal as if it's going to happen every month for the rest of the tax year. So, if you take out £40,000, they'll assume you're going to withdraw £480,000 over the year and tax you accordingly. And all you get after tax is £28,000. One way to avoid this is to take a small initial payment which, when multiplied by 12, is less than the £12,570 personal allowance. So, consider taking out £1,045 or even just £100 to start with. However, if you do end up overpaying tax due to the emergency tax code, you can reclaim it from HMRC using the P55 form. And a quick reminder, you've also triggered MPAA. Now, let's talk about mistake number four, investing too aggressively in retirement. This is a common one, especially for folks who've been successful investors during their working years. The five years before and after your target retirement date is often called the retirement danger zone. If your portfolio isn't set up for retirement, sequence of returns risk could have an adverse impact, especially if there's a deep and prolonged bear market. In some cases, this could be so severe that your portfolio is unable to recover, regardless of the strength of the recovery rally. Here's what you can do. About five years before retirement, you need to start reallocating your portfolio. This usually means building up a cash buffer to cover two to three years of living expenses, and increasing your allocation to bonds, typically to somewhere between 25% and 40% of your portfolio, depending on your risk tolerance. The cash reserves and bond allocation can help you ride out market downturns, without having to sell equities at a loss. You could augment this with the simplified bucket strategy I discuss in another video. 
This straightforward six-year, two-bucket strategy is essentially a bucket overlay on the total return approach. Speaking of which, let's move on to mistake number five, investing too conservatively. Yes, I know we just talked about the dangers of being too aggressive, but the pendulum can swing too far the other way as well. An overly conservative portfolio poses its own risks to the longevity of your retirement savings. If you don't have enough exposure to equities, you might not generate the returns you need to sustain your lifestyle over a 30 to 40 year retirement. In other words, you could outlive your money. Finding the right balance is crucial. The exact mix will depend on your personal circumstances, risk tolerance, and other sources of income. Now, let's talk about mistake number six, not considering your overall retirement funds and investment accounts to minimize taxes. Asset location matters. That is, it's not just about what you invest in, but where you hold those investments. There's a clear consensus that you want to withdraw from your general investment account first. The reasoning is simple. Unlike pensions and ISAs, these accounts don't offer tax advantages, so it makes sense to use them up before touching your tax-sheltered savings. ISAs, on the other hand, are great for those big spending years, so ISAs can be really helpful when you need a larger sum. As for pensions, it's worth mentioning that they're outside your estate for inheritance tax purposes. This can be a significant advantage if estate planning is a concern for you. However, if you are not planning to leave an inheritance, then spending your pension first has several advantages, as it allows your ISA investments to benefit from compounding growth. The key takeaway is that by being strategic about which accounts you draw from, depending on your plans. Let's move on to mistake number seven, not using your spouse's tax-free pension allowance. This is another example of why it's so important to look at the bigger picture. If you're married, you have an opportunity to really maximize your tax efficiency by considering your pensions and personal tax allowances, as well as your spouses. This can potentially save a significant amount in taxes. Let's take the example of a married couple needing £40,000 in annual expenses, using only tax-free lump sums from pensions. If drawn from only one pension, you would require £110,000. But if you draw from two pensions, this effectively doubles the 25% tax-free lump sum and also doubles the personal tax allowance. Using this approach, you would require only £60,000 or £30,000 from each pension. This is a reduction of 45% of how much you need to crystallize from your combined pensions. I cover this in more detail in another video. Now, on to mistake number 8, taking the full tax-free lump sum without a plan. I know it's tempting. After all, it's tax-free money. You might be thinking about that dream holiday you've always wanted, or maybe a new car to cruise around in during your retirement. Unless you have a specific plan for that money, like paying down a mortgage, taking the full lump sum might not be the best move. Why? Because once you've taken it out, it's no longer growing tax-free in your pension and is subject to inheritance tax. Instead of taking the whole 25% in one go, consider using drawdown to take smaller portions of your tax-free lump sum, as and when you need it. This approach allows the uncrystallized portion of your pension to keep growing tax-free and remain outside your estate when you pass away. Remember, once you've taken your tax-free lump sum, the remaining 75% of that portion of your pension is subject to your marginal tax rate. Depending on your circumstances, this could push you into a higher tax bracket. Now, if taking the full tax-free lump sum without a plan is a mistake, you can probably guess what mistake number 9 is, withdrawing your whole pension at once. I know what you might be thinking. Let's see if we can help. Do you get regular payments from an insurance company? For example, from a personal injury settlement or a car accident? Yes, monthly, and it's been working out okay. The thing is, it's my money and I need it now. Right. Withdrawing your entire pension as cash is possibly one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Not only will you lose the tax advantages of keeping your money within a pension, but you'll also face a substantial tax bill. For example, if you have £400,000 in your pension and decide to withdraw the entire amount, the first 25% is tax-free, but the remaining £300,000 will be taxed at your marginal rate. And you will be paying as much as 45% tax on a portion of that withdrawal. In total, you could lose up to £121,200 in taxes, leaving you with just £278,800. That's nearly a third of your pension gone to HMRC, and any unspent funds could also be subject to inheritance tax. Unless you absolutely need all of your pension in cash, 
it's far better to withdraw in smaller amounts, keeping as much as possible growing tax-free within the pension wrapper. So, in short, don't withdraw your entire pension as cash. It's rarely, if ever, a good idea. And finally, we come to mistake number 10. Now, this one isn't actually about accumulation at all. It's about something your future self in retirement would probably like to tell your present self. Not saving enough, early enough. And what did Judy Dench say about regrets? Maybe that's why you liked me so much. You flatter yourself. Oh, no remorse. <sighs> Just as I had imagined. Regret is unprofessional. <laughs> so, no regrets. Contribute as early as you can, take advantage of your employer contributions and HMRC tax relief to build your pension pot. The power of compound interest means that the earlier you start saving, the better off you'll be. This is true whether you're just starting your career, or you're a parent thinking about your children's future. Now, I know most of us can't afford to max out the annual pension contribution limits of £60,000, or even the £2,880 for a junior SIP. But the principle stands, contribute what you can, within your means, as early as possible. While it's also a good idea to save into an ISA alongside your pension, for more flexible access to your money, pensions generally win out when it comes to building the largest retirement pot. The combination of tax relief on contributions, tax-free growth, and the 25% tax-free lump sum at retirement is hard to beat. So, there you have it, the top 10 pension mistakes to avoid in retirement. If you are still here, thank you for your time. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.